to some Call of Cthulhu. Uh, let's see, we left off. Uh, we were just escaping the insane asylum. So let's see what we can do. Yeah. Look at the octopuses. Who goes there? That nightmare again. I need a drink. Ooh. Ah. Don't know that I can trust the cop anymore because he did die right in front of me. Hmm. Yeah, nothing up here, I don't suppose. Let's go see what they got to say. You're awake, Mr. Pierce. I am. How do you feel? Did I sleep long? The day is only starting. It's fine. Okay. How's our fugitive? Dr. Fuller hasn't reported your disappearance to the force, but that'll come soon. Bradley? Who else would it be? Mr. Pierce, are you alright? You look like you saw a ghost. I... There are things I can't explain. Tell us. What happened? Hmm. Apparently I can't use that. Um... Let's talk to you. I don't know that I can trust either of you. professional you did see Charles as what I'm sure of now is that the Hawkins case isn't just an accident and what brings you to that conclusion the fact that Charles Hawkins survived the fire I don't understand mr. Hawkins was buried that's what he would have you believe I have a hard time believing you you were there Bradley you even opened fire on him I'd remember that why would he fake his own death? Do you think he covered up his wife's murder? That's possible. It seems hard to swallow. Don't you have anything more concrete, Pierce? Um, your memory seems to be failing you. You Bradley, did shoot him. What do you remember? I don't understand your question. The night we went into the Hawkins mansion. You don't seem to remember the tunnels and what occurred there. Uh, no memory of going down any tunnel. No, we were in the manor, then... Uh, then what? I... Uh, the rest is quite blurry. I don't recall how I came back home. And then? I went to visit you at the hospital. And called on Marie's help to get you released. Mm -hmm. And you don't remember the events of the tunnel? I don't. Let's talk about something else. Let's check my psychology. I heard you talking earlier. Why am I not surprised? I get the impression you two don't get along. Intrusive and not very clever. Anyway, let's get back to the business at hand. Hmm. Sounds like I failed that. Damn. Uh, let's talk to Colby. See, Sarah Hawkins was committed. I found a we did find this stuff. Sarah Hawkins' name in the Institute's basement. It makes sense. A powerful family like the Hawkins had the means to hide such a disgrace. But everyone knows the Fullers have been taking care of the Hawkins for at least a generation. And all were aware of Mrs. Hawkins' fragility. Perhaps, but no one would allow a psychiatric internment. From what I read in the file, Fuller used her as a subject of his experiments. Francis Sanders and Sarah Hawkins, subjects of Dr. Fuller. Why those two? 
Um, did Fuller found Riverside? Given the energy he pours into <clears throat> Riverside, I presume it was Fuller's creation. His father's, to be correct. He was hmm. a surgeon on board the Scylla. He founded the hospital in 1904 with funds from the Hawkins family before he died and his son Thomas Fuller took over. Two families inextricably linked. Most island families are that way. Captain Fitzroy's father was also a seaman aboard the Scylla. Powerful families dominating everything. Yes, and as you could tell, Dr. Fuller is like some crazed emperor. He wouldn't be happy if he knew we were snooping around. <clears throat> I know the risks. I don't fear him. Do you wish to know anything else? I saw dead bodies. Dr. Fuller seems to be leaving a trail of corpses. Not to mention those strange machines, chains, and tools of all kind. Yes. I've been telling you that Fuller uses his patients as guinea pigs. What I saw was more hmm. akin to torture than medicine. Do you even hear what you're saying? Dr. Fuller is highly respected. It's the truth, Ethan. And I'll prove it to you. I'm listening, Mr. Pierce. Hmm. Um... What they have me I have flashbacks. They haunt me. What did they do to you? There was that doctor, Fuller, and a nurse. Blood everywhere. My legs, the pain, I, I couldn't bear it. I was screaming. They injected me with something. I woke up at the Institute. Bradley was there. And how you scared us. You seemed... Demented. You likely woke up during the anesthesia. No wonder those memories haunt you. What in God's name were they doing to you? What happened afterwards? When I woke up the second time, I was in a padded cell. That's where you found me, Doctor. After you released me, I got a good look at what's in store for the patients of the Riverside Institute. Hallucinogenic gas pumped into the cells. An infernal machine. Horrific medical experiments. Impossible. Dr. Fuller would never do such a thing. You should believe it, Ethan. What Mr. Pierce saw is precisely what I've been trying to prove. Did you discover anything else? <clears throat> I might be on to a lead. I, I met a Francis Sanders. Do you know him? Of course. He's a patient. Or was. I haven't seen him since Dr. Fuller had him transferred to the basement. He knew Sarah Hawkins, and that's what killed him. What? How did he die? I'm not sure I can explain it. Tell me how Mr. Sanders died. He called in the Shambler. I didn't see what, but something was there with us. Of what do you speak? Sanders said it was Sarah Hawkins' visitor. He spoke of it like a living being. Sarah Hawkins? Have I missed something here? This makes no sense. I don't see how it can help crack the Hawkins case. You really think she's involved? How could she have murdered Mr. Sanders? Francis Sanders mentioned Mrs. Hawkins just before dying. It's no coincidence. You know, Francis Sanders was a well-known art collector. I guess you can still pay a visit to his wife, Irene Sanders. An art collector, you say? That's probably how they met. If you plan on having dinner at the Sanders Ooh. household, please spare the widow the tale of her late husband's suffering. I don't agree. She deserves the truth. But that truth may be biased. We don't know the bottom of it. Hmm. Oh, I don't know which way to go. Um, let's go with the truth, then we'll He's just make right. her hysterical. We can't ignore the truth. 
But it could drive her mad. Better madness than ignorance. Very well. I'll go to see Francis's widow. Perhaps I'll find a link between her husband's death and Sarah Hawkins. Don't end up in the hospital this time. <laughs> I'll do my sure. best. Definitely don't end up in the freaking hospital. Let us go now and learn the truth about what's happening on this island. The other night's events are still confused in my head. Hmm. That's not very helpful. You shot the guy and you didn't even you know, remember a darn thing. Uh, could have a drink, but no. Wraith chose before that I shouldn't drink. Huh. That must be the Scylla. What, they abandoned ship in the storm? Pierce, Colden, and Bradley decided to team up to solve the Sarah Hawkins case. They have a new trail to follow. Francis Sanders, an art collector and friend of the painter, who died right in front of Pierce. The detective goes to his house in order to speak to his widow about the shambler that the unfortunate man mentioned before he died. Hmm... What can I do for you, sir? Mrs. Sanders, I'm a private detective. We must talk about your husband and his ties to Sarah Hawkins. Can I come in? You may. However, before we go any further, please know that my husband died yesterday. That is precisely what brings me here. Well, well, Cats. look who's here. You know each other. We met briefly. Time enough to iron out a few matters. The brave mm. detective has a talent for sticking his nose into my business. I bump into her every time I'm investigating someone's death. It's a small island, detective. My island. It's better that it's you bumping into me. You're investigating France's death. Why? Who hired you? I spoke to Francis before he died. His story suggests a link to a case I'm working on. Well, since this business has got nothing to do with me, I'll be in your husband's office, Irene. We'll carry on later. Very well, Miss Baker. This way, Mr. Carefully. Pierce. And do make yourself comfortable. It would seem that you have much to tell me. Mm -hmm. May I inquire as to when you had the opportunity to talk to my husband? Yesterday. I met him at the hospital. He spoke to me about Sarah Hawkins. Oh, of course he spoke to you about her. That's all he talked about. Sarah Hawkins and her paintings. Please forgive my tone. The fact is that I have not been allowed to see him since he was interned. You, on the other hand, a perfect stranger, were able to see him and even talk with him the day he died. How was he? Were you present when he had this attack? What mm. happened? That's a horrible thing to talk. Um, uh, 
You must not feel What guilty. happened to your husband is terrible, Mrs. Sanders. But from what I saw, it was inevitable. The man I met yesterday had lost his reason. He suffers no longer, if you would allow me such a platitude. Of course. Thank you for your kind words. Nobody in that hospital would have deigned to speak them to me. However, it will require more than that to soothe my mind. I need to understand. H how could this happen? In a reputed institute? And, and right before your eyes? Did you not do anything to help him? True culprits so ask Fuller, he's the eminent doctor. But I would caution you, you'll find his treatments more terrifying than the illnesses he sets out to cure. That churl no longer takes the trouble to receive me. He sends his secretary to tell me that I cannot see Francis. Me. His own widow. He must think that I am a terrible wife for having abandoned him in such a way. But I only wanted what was best for him. I'm not here to condemn you, Mrs. Sanders. Oh, I'm tired, Mr. Pierce. I would be grateful if you could tell me what you expect of me, and then leave. Let's ask about the shambler. Did your husband talk to you about Sarah Hawkins' visitor? A shambler, to use his precise terms. <laughs> well, you can't imagine that's all he talked about. It's exhibited at the center of the gallery. No better place for the painting that endowed him with the privilege of such a shameful and miserable end to his life. Hold on. The Shambler is a painting by Sarah Hawkins. Who else to paint such horrors? Take a look for yourself, if you feel so inclined. It is my only lead at this stage. I suppose I have nothing to lose. Then you have paid no heed. For my part, I refuse to set foot in that gallery again. But if you are so eager to see it, I would urge you to make the most of your visit. Because I count on ridding myself of that thing as soon as I can. Thank you, Mrs. Sanders. I won't be long. Interesting. Did she really care for him, after all? Dear Madam, I acknowledge receipt of the letter in which you demand the body of your deceased husband. I am sorry to inform you that I cannot agree to return his body to you. At the moment of his interment, you signed a discharge, allowing me to dispose of his body as I see fit. I extend my deepest condolences to you. Thomas Fuller. Yeah. Hmm. Do I have enough points to upgrade anything? Oh, I do. Um, hmm. Yeah. Need to get my occultism. I'm not sure how I was supposed to have enough occultism before. Um, I'm doing a lot of talking in this, so I probably should get my eloquence up. Okay, get those balanced out a little bit. I can use that to do something. The day the Shambler came into the Sanders' lives. The photograph of Sarah Hawkins next to the Sanders. They must be close. Is that a lion or something? It's a 
big old pointy teeth there. Hmm. Can reconstruct a scene, huh? Francis Sanders and Sarah Hawkins were close. Friends, even? I was a big fan of her paintings. A house of artists. Hmm. Sanders' accession register. He wrote beside the Shambler. Finally. What did Sarah Hawkins fear so much that she didn't want to sell a painting? He finally won. Was Sanders aware of his imminent doom? She despises Sarah Hawkins, but it's the painting she truly hates. Why? Is it just a jealous wife? Or is there more to it? She hates the painting because he loves the painting more than her? He didn't want Sanders to have the painting. She must have felt devastated. Well, why did she sell him the painting? Hmm. A house of artists. Ah! ah. Did it just burn my brain? The Shambler. I need to see it. The second volume in this series covers everything from gas, gangrene, to trench uh, nephritis. In addition to precise and detailed study, the book presents some avant-garde theories. The incredible complexity of this book reserves it for medical experts. Cool. Let's go nose around the house and all your stuff. Try to avoid cat. I think that will cause some issues. Let's see what this cylinder has to say once it's inserted in a phonograph. An audio recording that Francis Sanders left for his wife Irene. Edison Gold's molded record. Use one of those. I found these sleeping pills in the Sanders house. They were prescribed to Francis Sanders. Or were they prescribed to Francis Sanders or to Irene? I don't know. A strange Amerindian pendant. An ancient amulet, probably Amerindian. I wonder what its purpose could be. Interesting. Another volume of the Reverend's Wife's Diary. This volume spends some time on Reverend Wywick's, or Wickwood's community. His wife expresses her worries about the strange dreams that the Reverend's congregation are having since their arrival on the island. Some members of the community, her husband included, began to speak of their vision as a messenger sent by God. 
She is scared that they will suffer the same fate as the lost tribe. Strange. For months, Sarah Hawkins refused to part with her painting, to finally give it away for nothing. Dear Francis, I beg you to give up all hope of ever owning this accursed painting. If our friendship has any meaning for you, please spare me the weight of guilt. I cannot be the architect of your fall. I beg you, my dear friend, forget the shambler. Your friend, Sarah Hawkins. Whale and the Cod. Or a Brief History of Dark Water by Erwan Greenmouth. It is focused on the past glory of the island. Ooh. Ooh, we got a key to the gallery. It is the work of a student in book form. Although the observations are relevant, they lack the expertise of an experienced physician. However, the questions asked allow us to imagine new ways of exploring human reality. That's, that's not ominous at all. Oh, dropping in with a lurk, playing with Bix, or I'd hang out with you. Oh, I understand, Megastar. Appreciate you stopping by. Hey, you can you can make the call. Should I read the book or not read the book? It's the first book it's asked me if I actually want to read it, so it's a bit ominous. Should I read it, or should I not read it? Did you vanish from me? I guess I, I'm going to assume that you just uh, popped off and you just here to give me a view. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to read the book. So why not? It is a kind of encyclopedia of monstrous and unknown creatures. I'm beginning to believe that they exist. Wow, that's the other sign right there. On that. That is all a bunch of crazy crap. Okay then. Oh, fine, I'll talk to her. That's twice you've stepped on my toes, Detective. Try not to make a habit of it. I've got a lot of bad habits. Some can be more fatal than others. What have you come looking for in this gallery? I'm not here to create problems for you. I'm not here to cause trouble, if that's what's worrying you. Worry me? Don't overestimate yourself. If the last beating wasn't enough for you, I can always give it another go. But as long as you keep out of my way, you're free to carry on with your visit. What are you doing here? And you? What brings you to the Sanders home? I'm here on business. Irene asked me to liquidate all these paintings. She doesn't intend to hang around here for long. Why you? Believe hmm. it or not, there aren't many collectors on Darkwater. It needs someone with a network and a means of transport to the mainland. A choice that comes down to Fitzroy and me. 
And I'm far more pleasant, wouldn't you say? Oh, you can't take these paintings off the island. If these paintings are like, as horrible as it seems, what the heck? These things are glowing? These artifacts date from pre-Columbian times. These artifacts date from pre-Columbian times. Hmm. What? Hmm. what the frick? This must be like the Sphinx? Sort of? Kind of freaking weird looking. Hmm. There's that statue that was down. Yeah, that's the same statue that was down in the basement. This is a gallery of horrors. The man transforms an entire wing of his manor into an art gallery. That's kind of cool looking. Hmm. All right, that's really disturbing looking. Okay then. And there's a lurch with a shambler over there. What the fuck is up with this ceiling? It's gonna go out on me. I have a feeling when I look at that painting, horrible things are gonna happen. Why was he so interested in old weapons? Why are all these tablets glowing? That's odd. It's like they found an ancient tablet. In the stone. Well, oh, aren't you loving? Hide in there. On that duck. Look at this. <sighs> What's that on the floor? Is this dagger part of Sanders' collection, or was he seeking to acquire it? Far from bah. far from possessing the talents of Sarah Hawkins, Sanders drew a dagger with a tortured form down to the smallest detail. The guard carries a strange esoteric symbol. A recurring feature of his correspondence with Sarah. Huh. I should like this fucking thing on fire. Don't turn your back to the damn thing. Here we go. 
alien isolation. What the hell was that? Oh shit. Well, oh, he's probably he's probably found me. Oh, Fuck you. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> flashbacks to alien isolation. Okay, I'm just gonna What the hell was that? He didn't see me. He didn't see me. Stay over there. Fuck off, yo! Go somewhere else! Ah, oh, shit! No! Oh, damn it! to do. I have to examine the what Shambler. The uh, what's the diary say? Um, the Shambler is a painting. Irene Sanders doesn't seem to know what she hates the most, Sarah Hawkins or her work. The fact remains that she accuses her of costing her husband sanity. He apparently gouged his own eyes out under the influence of the painting. I must see it. The key to the gallery is probably in the office. The Sanders and Sarah Hawkins were close. It's undeniable. The widow didn't tell me everything, but her friend, er, blah, but her house speaks for her. Everything began with Francis Sanders' obsession with the Shambler, an exceptional painting in more ways than one. Uh, okay.
fuck you! Fuck you bunches! Fuck you bunches! Ah, can I do something with your painting? So I need to get the shambler painting. What the hell was that? That seems to be what I need to do. <laughs> oh, shit! That's the wrong way to go! Bastard. All right, so can I use lights? What are my controls? Uh, lights. Middle. I'm not supposed to my lights. 
Burn the painting. Fuck you. Fuck you. You go fuck off and die. Fuck. How do I destroy this damn thing? Damn. Oh. I need the dagger. It looks like the one. Shit. Is this the right dagger? I don't know, fucking know. I'm gonna watch you fucking die. Okay, so I was on the right path. I need the right dagger. Stab that fucking painting. Okay. What the hell was that? Okay, uh... What was that paint? Okay. So we need the dagger that looks like this. Um... Okay, so it needs to have it needs to exactly look like that. No. No. Nope. No. No first daggers. No. Might be that one. What the hell was that? Gotta be one of these in here. Stay away. You stay over there. Keep going. It's weird, you don't know where I went.
down. That's the one. I just have to get over there and get it. What the hell was that? Get, get the goddamn thing. This dagger looks different. You dumb motherfucker. You sure you won't be needing that hand? You're losing it, detective. At this rate, you're right. The bottle will get you before I do. You didn't see anything. I saw you within an inch of putting a dagger through your forearm. Did I miss something more interesting? Sound like a Looney Tunes when I talk like that. No, I just drank a bit too much. It, it's nothing. I, I, I think I just drank too much. That goes without saying. If you can't tell the difference between reality and fiction, then you're in real trouble. Hmm. You didn't hear anything? I ran, screamed, broke a pane of glass. You were in the next room, and you didn't hear a thing. If I hadn't heard a thing, I'd still be in the other room. The door was blocked. I got in as soon as I could. I like to look after my goods. You mean me? Don't flatter yourself, sweetheart. I'm talking about the contents of this gallery. And by the way, where do you think you're going with that dagger? It saved my life. It's an extraordinary dagger. You should talk to Algernon Drake. He's an antique dealer here on Darkwater. He'll tell you all about it. From what I saw in the ledgers, it was him who sold it to Sanders. I really should talk to this this symbol on the dagger, it was all over Sanders' cell. It's what protected him. It's what protected me, too. If Hawkins was trying to get rid of this shambler, she might have made contact with Drake. This antique dealer has a good knowledge of the occult. I have nothing to lose by meeting him. You've got your spunk back. Go where you want. I'm staying here to talk business with Irene. <clears throat> the Shambler turned out to be much more than an artwork paint Yeah, than an artwork painted by Sarah Hawkins. As a huge creature came out of the painting to attack Pierce. After a hard fight, the detective managed to send it back into the painting. He later discovered that the dagger he used to repel the creature had been sold to Sanders by a man named Algernon Drake, owner of the nameless bookstore. Pierce dis, uh, decides to pay the library a visit. Uh-oh. 
bad things seem to just keep being one step ahead of me. The cat sent me here to frame me. Where is the bookseller? <sighs> but got about an hour in. So I think we'll leave it there. We just hit the end of the chapter, and that was a pretty exciting end to that last episode. So yeah, thanks for joining me. Uh, hope to see you in the next one. Thanks, and good night.